To build a simple chat app with channels, we'll follow the example from the channels module documentation. The chat app will make use of both WebSocket and HTTP connections. That's because we want to be able to load pages such as home or even the group chat page itself using regular HTTP requests. But we also want to use a WebSocket connection for messages users send in a group chat. For installation, you can follow the instructions to install both channels and Daphne. We also set the ASCII application variable in setting that is because we want to run the development server with Daphne as an ASCII application. Next, we can create the members app, which will allow users to sign up and log in. We then create the chat app. It will have a simple model to record messages and chat groups. It will have HTTP views and URLs. Those include URLs to create a new chat group, join one, leave the group, remove the group, or simply open the chat log of the group to start chatting. Next, we move on to creating two files for the chat app, consumers.py and routing.py. Routing.py will define the WebSocket URI pattern and the consumer that will handle it. As we covered in the previous video, consumers.py will contain the consumers that will handle WebSocket requests. The consumer inherits from WebSocket consumer, but there are other consumer types it can inherit from. The consumer will have three main methods. Connect will extract the chat group ID from the scope of the connection. Here we will call the group add function to allow the users connected to the group to receive updates when Whenever another participant sends a message to the group. The accept method accepts the WebSocket request sent from the client. Moving on to the receive method, which is when the server receives a message from the client. When the client sends a message to the group chat, this method is captured by the consumer and broadcasted to the users connected to this chat using group send. The message is received and sent back to the client. We also save the chat messages in the message model. The async to sync function will execute asynchronous methods as synchronous ones. However, you can keep them as async and make your consumer inherit from an async consumer instead. After that, we'll update ASCII.py to include the routing patterns for WebSocket connections. We'll also wrap it with auth middleware stack to identify the logged in user sending the WebSocket request. Now we also have some HTML templates, for example, home, sign up, and login. Once a user is logged in, they can access the chat HTML template. The chat HTML template will be rendered via a HTML request, but the template contains some JavaScript code that will send WebSocket requests to the Django server. There are four HTML elements, a home anchor that will take you back to the home page, a div where the chat messages will appear, an input tag to write a message, and a send button to send the message. In the JavaScript section, we assemble the base WebSocket URL according to the current chat room, start a WebSocket connection. This has a method called onMessage that will get executed when the server sends a message to the client WebSocket. When that message is received, we'll add it to the chat log div tag. Another function is an onClick function for when a user sends a message. This will get the message from the input tag and send it to the server using the open WebSocket connection. Now for messages to flow between users and the group chat without getting retrieved from the database, we will use Redis as the data store to collect user messages. More specifically, channels Redis and we'll spin it up locally in a Docker container. We also need to set the channel layers variable in settings.py. After database migration, we can spin up the app. I'll use Firefox to sign up and create a new chat group. From my Chrome browser, I'll sign up as another account, and here I can see the group chat that has been created by the Firefox user. I'll join that group and open the chat. Here the two users will start chatting, If I go back to home and then open the chat again, I can still see the chat history. And if I exec into the Redis container, I can see what data is being stored. Although this chat app has very minimal functionalities compared to something like Slack, it still demonstrates that you can build this with Django in a short time, which is very impressive. I'll add the GitHub link of the code in the description below, and I'll see you next time.